The expression Chinese phones sounds no longer offensive nowadays. The smartphones from Middle Kingdom are wiping many a brand competitors either with specs or with cool features. And all this is under a spicy sauce from an extremely low price. Xiaomi especially actively proves themselves in terms of price. Their products are often not only cheaper than solutions from Samsung or Sony, but also more affordable than phones from other Chinese brands like Huawei or OnePlus. But what they gonna do when people get used to their generosity and take it for granted? Torturing or executions? These are things of the past. The correct answer is to run a sub-brand and sell products even cheaper. Meet Pocophone F1, the first smartphone from kinda new brand. The dreams come true, the infinite success is on the way. Or not. Let's figure this out. Traditionally, let's start with appearance. The first look on the body of device brought me to a thought that somebody wants to save a little cash for souvenirs. The rear is plastic, it is covered with blue pearlescent paint. Ribs aren't made from dragon glass, but from the same polycarbonate. No patterns, chamfering or interesting shapes here. I do not feel deprived, but will you agree that this stuff looks boring? Soon you will find on sale more upgraded F1 with Aramid back. I would definitely give a thumbs up to it, however by far you're welcome to check our blue model. The front panel is under a tempered glass with oleophobic coating. In my humble opinion, our recent guest Mi A2 had a better one. On the other hand, it's nice that manufacturer didn't forget about it. The assembly feels to be great, do not even think about cracks or gaps. This guy doesn't try to slip away from the hand, however iPhone SE lovers might find it pretty difficult to deal with. What you need to know is that Pocophone doesn't know what wireless charging is. The plastic body couldn't fit it probably, but 6 years old plastic Lumia 920 could. The same for NFC, why the heck the question for Pocophone? We all know the Qi and NFC debuted not yesterday and I would love to see these words in spec lines of every modern smartphone. Hit that like button if you agree. Another external detail is tray that holds only two nano SIM or one SIM card and a micro SD memory card. You won't find here the same huge drawer that we saw for example in Redmi S Pro or S2. To the good news, mini jack is here, well played, the fingerprint reader is snap and stable, also inside the notch, which we will still have to get used to, leaves really fast sensor, sharpened specially to recognize your face. Now we pass to the screen, Pocophone F1 is equipped with 6.18 inch IPS panel with Full HD Plus resolution. The pixel density is 403 dpi, in real life the pictures look good to the eye and causes no questions. The range of brightness adjustment pleases with its top value and grieves a bit with the lowest. When checking some information from a smartphone, sometimes you might have a desire to make the screen dimmer. Our camera thinks that viewing angles are not ideal at all, because the image partially loses its brightness in case of extreme changes of angle in front of the user's eyes. Personally, I find readability stable even while tilting the phone a lot. We haven't detected any inversion of the picture. One of my colleagues has a serious observation regarding the F1 screen, he clearly sees the light slip on the outer edge. Personally, I do not notice it in daily use. Going deeper in this topic is all up to you. Another frontline feature that I already mentioned once, a notch. Good news is that we can hide it. The bad one, black color on IPS panel is not so deep as an AMOLED screen of Mi 8, that's why the outline of the eyebrow will be visible quite often. As we get to multimedia, I'll say a few words about the sound. Let's start with the capabilities of speakers. You got it right, here we are dealing with the stereo sound, because the front facing speaker is trying its best to sing along with the main one. The smartphone sounds very loud and even detailed in some regards. The calls will not have a chance to snatch away from you. The problem I see is rather in co-working of the so-called duo speakers. Wonder how it looks on practice? As you understand, the pleasant sound is not a merit of the front-facing speaker. Through the headphones, the gadget sings extremely crispy. If you are not a part of hi-fi cult, I assure you will be satisfied with the sound of the smartphone with 99% chance. The bass is deep, detailed, high frequencies are a bit dumb to avoid ear biting. The middle keeps fine as for me, in general the sound is not aggressive and more than pleasant to ear. 
How do we deal with cameras? Let's start with 20 megapixel selfie camera. It shoots excellent pictures in good light. Unless you do something like taking a photo in the front light and do not shake your hands, believe me, the results will satisfy you. Detailization feels worthy. The dynamic range is average. The main camera block consists of two modules for 12 and 5 megapixels. In total, photos are very good. I don't know whether it is due to the local artificial intelligence, but Pocophone deals really well with this stuff. Green color is saturated, the sky has a nice blue shade. If you like to take pictures, F1 mostly won't disappoint you. The frame sharpness is adequate, nothing is futile, HDR works correctly and comes handy in some situations. In the evening photos are also fine. If the source of light is in the frame, the photo will not resemble a noisy mesh, which is already good. F1 can also create portrait photos. I cannot say that they came out pretty good, but we saw much worse. Let me give you one important recommendation. Do not create pictures with blurring in poor lighting conditions. You will see the doll effect in its most. Our guy films 4K video without stabilization and 1080p with it. Evidently, I speak about the software stabilization. Smartphone haven't heard about 60 FPS. 30 is the maximum. Clips turn out quite snap, with details and fine dynamic range. The hardware here is Qualcomm Snapdragon 845, which includes 8 core processor with 2.8 GHz and Adreno 630 graphics. F1 has 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Everything is quite fast and stable, either interface, software and daily task apps plus games. PUBG is twisting its maximum without lags at all, World of Tanks bleeds with ultra settings, also amused with smooth picture and high FPS. Here we can talk about stable 58 to 60 with a drawdown to 55 to 50 FPS at the moments of an epic dynamics in the screen. Yeah, you got it right! F1 came out to be the real gaming smartphone. Performance benchmark grants our guys such points. Take a look at the screenshots and we'll talk about the heating and throttling. Before I jump into details, here is a small screencast from official webpage. As you can see, the advanced cooling system was declared. In fact, this is a copper tube with coolant, which almost evenly distributes heat throughout the whole body of the smartphone. It's simple and it works. Believe me or not, works indeed. So, it's not just a marketing bait. The smartphone evenly heats up all over the body, not just point-wise. So, even after an hour of playing of the most demanded time killers, the phone can continues to emit a high FPS value. To demonstrate the level of throttling, here are the screenshots of Antutu results from Pocophone 1, OnePlus 6 and Galaxy S9 Plus running 10 times in a row. As you can see, the Xiaomi child shows the best indicator of resistance to heated hardware. Next, we ran another test for our three smartphones, reboot, cleaning the multitasking menu and Antutu test to know the genuine numbers, then a couple of minutes of rest and temperature measurements, half an hour for tanks blitz, once again taking measurements and onto to run, after this half an hour of PUBG and then onto to with temperature check. I think the numbers speak for themselves. Let's focus on battery, it got 4000 mAh, it is boldly enough for a whole day of work with serious loads. Of course, in case if you don't deny games, social media and YouTube plus conversations. In case you manage your tasks more power efficiently, you can easily extend battery life up to 2 days. What about charging time? Time. From an 80 quick charge adapter, smartphone charges up to 18% for 15 minutes, for an hour to 72%, and will have 90% after 1 hour and 20 minutes. The last 10% require another half an hour of charging. Pocophone F1 is a device on Android 810, on top of which the Xiaomi rolled its own user interface, MIUI for Poco. The differences with classical Xiaomi firmware are mainly in visual part. Personally, I liked a lot having a list of installed apps, as well as the ability to filter them not only by name or type, but also by color. It is not only fun, but also pretty convenient. In addition, it is nice to have my favorite features like screen gesture that replace regular buttons and app cloning. By the way, there are rumors that F1 will get the 9th Android in the next 2-3 months, so we wait. The main idea of this review, which the attentive viewer simply must comprehend, Pocophone F1 is a real tangle of compromise 
compromises. Every flaw gets the strongest counter and vice versa. In nature, it is called balance, and at this moment we must remember how generous this Xiaomi is. Thanks to it, F1 got the title of the most accessible smartphone on Snapdragon 845. I bet you won't find anything like this. Pocophone F1 is definitely recommendable for purchase, and believe me, you're gonna love this guy, especially if you check this review attentively. In the description box below, you will find the links on the stores where you can buy this product. I thank you for watching.